Hello, I'm Susan Patricelli Regan, your host for Connecticut Valley Views. And my guest today is the infamous Lee Elsie. He is the host of the Lee Elsie Show on 94.9 on Monday through Friday from 6 to 10 a.m. Welcome, Lee. And a quick question. You went on a walkabout recently. You uh, Somehow or other, you were uh, without your car and you walked to work. Well, kind of. Uh, yeah, so uh, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. I saw all of the, the past uh, es es esteemed guests that you have on, so I I'm humbled by the idea that you would ask me to come on your show. So thank you very much for that. I appreciate it very I'm much. I'm delighted to do so. So... Um, I was up like my, you know, my normal day, which starts about three o'clock in the morning uh, because we've got the morning show. So I went out and I live at the bottom of a very steep, tall driveway. It's about three or 400, 350 feet long. And sometimes when it gets icy, I have trouble getting up the driveway and okay. it happened to be very icy. Sure. And even though my truck has four wheel drive, I couldn't get out of the driveway. So, you know, I was throwing sand down, doing a million different things. <laughs> Right. Nothing. This is three o'clock in the morning now, too. Sure. So I'm going all over the place, blah, blah, blah. And, and finally, I just I, I give up. I say I can't get out of the driveway. <laughs> and my wife is, is sound asleep again. So I don't want to wake her up. So I just throw my my backpack over my shoulder and I start walking to work, which is about 20 miles away. Oh, my and God. What I, <laughs> what I was going to do and I did is I called one of my coworkers, who I also know does the morning show because in the building, that we broadcast out of there are five yeah. shows going on at the same time so i yeah. said listen sean come pick me up will you i'm uh, i'm walking to work so <laughs> he came and got me so I, I was gonna get there one way or another so, so how many miles did you actually walk a couple of miles about three and a half three and a half all right yeah, got your I, exercise yeah, yeah i got okay. my exercise for the day sure yeah, yeah well now your full power radio station it's located in new london connecticut how far does it actually reach i mean what kind of listening audience territory do you have the terrestrial signal is really strong. Um, so the tower for the radio station is actually in Long Island. And what they do with this tower is they, they angle it at the state of Connecticut and radio signals carry very well over water. So we pretty much have everything from, you know, just, just let's say south, uh, south of Providence all the way down. You can get us some days in Bridgeport, crystal clear. Right. And pretty much up and around Hartford. So we get about, I would say we get a good three quarters of the state, but radio is changing. So every day, you know, technology keeps improving and, and you can actually, you know, everyone listens now on the app, you know, they listen on their phone. Yeah. And yeah. You've got, you've got a very broad audience. I, I, you get more callers every day. Yeah. You know, but, but I, but you don't need a strong signal anymore to attract mm -hmm. listeners, you know, because right. people can listen on their phones. You can, like right. I said, you could be in, in a parking garage in Stanford and get us clear right. as well. Right. Yeah. yeah well, uh, what our viewers want to see is will the real Lee Elsie stand up? So <laughs> you, you, you call yourself the voice of freedom, but when did you start using that that reference and uh, what does it really stand for? I mean, we can get yes. it. You Trademark. Tell yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> when did I start using it? I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's, when, no, that's um, all right. When did you start using it? Is this uh, recent, a few years ago? No, we started using that about five years ago, but the okay. last the last couple of years, I tried to promote it more. In fact, in the last couple of years, I did trademark it. So it's part of me. So we kind of uh, pushing that forward. And I think it got a, it's got a neat little ring to it. And mm -hmm. the, the people seem to have identified with it pretty well. And it's just the idea that, you know, we get on the air every single day and we try to promote freedom. I mean, that's, yeah. isn't that sure. the most important thing? Sure, sure. Well, um, one of the things that I know that when I listen to you, you feel no sense of retribution. I mean, you pretty much are yourself. You're pretty candid. Yes. Uh, you're comfortable in that role, are you not? Yes. I don't have anything really to hide from anybody. I, I, I tell stories about my personal life. I tell stories like, you know, if I go to a doctor's, I tell that story. If I, my car breaks down, I tell that story. Because a lot of times, yes, politics and news and, you know, who's who and Democrats versus Republicans, everybody wants to hear that. But also everybody wants to know, hey, did he like that movie or did he watch that show or, or whatever? So it, radio has this amazing ability to be very personable and yeah. it's very one-on-one -on -one. 
Mm. And I, I, I try to do that every single day. So I, I really, you know, I just let it all hang out. In fact, I always think of my listeners as my psychiatrists. What I note is, is that when I listen to other radio stations, they're very careful. They, they let people on, they let them talk, they let them ramble and so forth. But if you don't like someone, you, you just cut them off, and, which is fine. I mean, it's your show. Well, I don't think I, I don't really know if I cut people off. I, yeah. I have a core sale. You know, we got a lot of callers, but we also have a lot of callers who call every, like there's a certain amount of callers who call every single day. Mm -hmm. And usually those guys and gals are, uh, you know, they become almost like, you know, part of the show. So you give them a little extra leeway to, uh, to kind of do what they, they want to do. So yeah, no, I, I try to let everybody have their, their five minutes or 15 minutes. Uh, the, the other thing I noticed too, is that you give your guests a lot of time to talk. Right. And sometimes I know that other hosts, you know, they jump in, they, you know, they want to make sure they get their two cents or they want to refer to something that, you know, in their past that identifies with the caller. And you, you actually let people talk at some length. And I think that's a great attribute because when you do so, you're actually being hospitable to the guest who wants to get their message across, whether it's important or whether it's just an everyday caller who wants to kind of spout off or rant or whatever it is. But you're always very courteous to it. And, and, and that's an admirable feature when you're an interviewer. Well, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, I do try to do that. And you know, it's... It's simple. I have plenty of time to be me, right? So if you're in, if you're on my show, mm. and we block out a certain amount of time, you know, I, I can, I can kind of do my own thing in my own time. I'm, I'm there sort of to facilitate a conversation. Like you're on the show with me, you know, every right. other week now. And so, uh, you know, if you have something you want to say, I usually, I'm going to give you the opportunity to say it. Now, there may yeah. be some times when I would disagree with something that somebody says, and sure. I'll push back. But for the most part. It's almost like you've you know blocked out some time and we're just having a, a talk and it's it's sort of like your world and I'm just a part of it for that little while. Right, right. Now, when when you the subjects that you pick, the guests that you have, do you choose them according to what seems to be the most critical subject matter of the day? How do you go about picking your guests, or do they sometimes ask if they can be on or set yeah. up or whatever? How does it work? Uh, so so for me, uh, I have a core set of regular guests. I have off the top of my head, I think it's maybe 15 okay. uh, guests that come on every, you know, every certain day, every week. So somebody, you know, eight o'clock on Monday, two o'clock, I was, you know, yeah. eight o'clock on Tuesday, whatever. Uh, so there's right. a core that are on, no matter what the topics are, those guys and gals come on. Um, as far as anybody else, unless it's a national sort of person or somebody who's really in a, a newsworthy situation, like someone fighting against a union or a teacher or something that happened yeah. in school or something. I, I always kind of stand back and let people reach out to me. I never ask a politician to come on. Never. Uh, I haven't done that in the longest time. So okay. if you hear a politician on my show, they've reached out to me. And the only reason why I do it that way is because I don't want to be accused of being, you know, a, have a, have a favoritism towards anybody. Very so true. that goes for Democrats too. I mean, if you're yeah. a Democrat and you call me up and you want airtime, you're going to get it. Yes. That's, so yeah, that's how I handle it. I let, I, I mostly let people call me, except for my core regulars. Then I yes. just, they just come on. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. I I feel that's uh, that's very important um, to do that. I have on on the show we're doing right now, Connecticut Valley Views. I have had people uh, very broad, diversified across the aisle. Uh, obviously, a lot of politics and doctors, lawyers, business leaders. Many administration people, obviously, they've been Democratic, you know, different departments, um, done also, you know, domestic violence. I try and cover a lot of things. The show is about informing people, and that's what I feel your show is about, is informing people to the best of your ability. And I think that you, amongst many media people, try very hard to get the facts and right. not so much your opinion. And, it, and the media has become a very a very focused on commentary and their opinion. And that's why we've got the, oh, I listen to the uh, conservative stations. Oh, well, I watch the liberal shows. And that's divided the country, don't you think? I think you're right on the money. I, I think uh, social media, your Facebooks, your Twitters have uh, pay, played a, a major role in that division. And 
I don't know how to get that back on track. I, mm -hmm. I can only say be nicer to each other in certain cases. See, I, I welcome when, when somebody calls my show who happens to have a different point of view, I welcome that. I mean, there was a time when I had more Democrats or more liberals as regular guests on my show than conservatives because it made the conversation more interesting. Yes. Yes. And what happens is over the period of, of, you know, over a year, over the period of years, some of those folks have fallen by the wayside. Some of them are no longer in politics. Some of them didn't see the use in their, in their lives to come on the show. It, it mm -hmm. was only a negative for them. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they would get on the, sh the show with me. We'd have a, a dialogue and they really didn't get anything out of it. So over the, you know, the, I've been doing this for a long time. It's sort of now almost 50, 50. Now people will say, well, you have all conservative guests or you have all Republicans. It's right. not true. Yeah. I, I really have, if I went down the list, it's probably a 50-50 split. Now, I have more Republican politicians on mm -hmm. because the Democrat politicians rarely come on. There are a few that do, and I give them credit. I mean, mm -hmm. Kathy Austin comes on all the time. She'll reach out to me. Uh, Dela Cruz will reach out to me. Rep Dela Cruz will reach out to me. Even Needleman will re reach out to me from time to time. And that Lamont's been on. Uh, half a dozen times or so until I, I started writing columns about Lamont and they stopped coming on. So <laughs> I kind of no cut my own Sure, yeah, sure. So. Well, let's talk a little bit more about your uh, your earlier career. You you were a minor league baseball player. Is that I correct? Was. Yeah, <laughs> give I us was. Some, <laughs> give us some insight into that period of your. Yeah, um, I I'd have to say it's probably my the, my favorite time of my life was uh, you know chasing the baseball around those green diamonds. I, you know, I still consider myself a baseball player. I think if I were to die tomorrow, and I hope I don't. Uh, Spread your ashes but, on the field or what? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that, you know, if I have a, a headstone, I, I think it's going to be baseball players. Still, you know, still what really is inside. Well, what position did you play? Actually, what position? Well, uh, a couple different, I mean, I was mostly a catcher and uh, played outfield after a while in minor leagues. I signed as a catcher. Uh, but, it, you know, from the first time I saw him bat at, at seven, eight years old, that's all I ever wanted to do. So, you know, my mm -hmm. my whole early adulthood, you know, all childhood and then yeah. into, you know, teens, it was, I was so uber focused on baseball. In fact, to the point where if I look back, I missed out on a lot of stuff, right? You know, I missed yeah. out. My, you know, yeah. and, I, and I, you know, I was always kind of just so driven to be a baseball player when my friends were doing their thing and other people were doing their thing. I was, you know, I was all in for baseball and, and I, I'm not, I'm not sad about that. I'm glad that I did that. Sure. And it got me, you know, it got me pretty far, got me a college scholarship. It got me a professional baseball. Oh yeah. Career, that, that's, kind of yeah. That's, that's a fantastic. That's uh, what do you think about the athletes these days now that get recognition and now they're getting some of the profits uh, oh, for the collegiate gotta, players. You think that's good? Yeah. I got to admit, I do. I, I thought for the longest time that these kids deserve to get paid. I know people say, well, the education is their payment, but when the universities are making, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in some cases, and the kids are, right. you know, barely, listen, when I played week, if you were on a full scholarship, you couldn't get a job. You, you couldn't get a part-time job because yeah, you can't, you couldn't good. exceed a certain amount of income. Right. So it, it just really handcuffs these kids. And, you know, when you look at how much time an athlete in college has to to make money, right? Like not every one of these kids is going to be a professional athlete, right? So why not let them take those four years that they're playing a division one or division two college sport and make money? Maybe mm -hmm. they can make it, you know, 40, 50,000 extra dollars and put it in their pocket and use it for something, a down payment on a house. I don't see any negative in it at all. Yeah. It, that, well, they're sharing the profits. I mean, let's face it. I mean, these guys are making money off them. They're like yeah. a stable full of horses for them. And, and yeah. these guys have got their opportunity. Now you also did uh, if I have this correctly, uh, did you do a stint on TV or a soap opera or something? I did. I did. Okay. So, <laughs> tell us about that interesting part. All right. You want the, the short story, long story? I mean, <laughs> how much? Story? <laughs> well, we, we got, we got a few story. minutes. Right. Tell us the long story. No, I, I mean, when I was done with baseball and, you know, I kind of saw the handwriting on my, the wall and the, my mm -hmm. career was over. I, you know, here I was a puppy with no home. I, I didn't, what was I supposed to do? I had nowhere to go. I, okay. you know, I, I didn't, I didn't re yet know I wanted to do radio. So I, I met a friend of mine who was an act, actor in, in New York and they were on a soap opera and they said, you know, you should come take a class, take an acting class and see if you like it. Mm -hmm. I said, come on, why would I want to do that? that that's not me. 
but they convinced me and I went down to New York and I sat in an acting class and mm -hmm. I'm sitting there, uh, I'm, you know, I'm 28 years old. I'm, I'm in yeah. you know, good shape, whatever. And I look around the room and it's, I'm sitting in, in a room with 15 beautiful women. I'm like, why wouldn't I want to do this, right? So uh, I, I decided to start taking classes. And for the next year and a half, I took multiple classes a week. I traveled back and forth to New York. I worked part-time on the radio. And, uh, you know, I did a lot of black box theater, like uh, that's off, off, off Broadway stuff. Okay. And I ended up landing a recurring role on As the World Turns, which. Oh, that's been around yeah, for a long time. Sure. I know. Yeah. I know. Well, I was a bartender in this bar they called Yo's. Okay. And every time they used that bar, they would, they would call me. Sometimes I would get speaking roles. Sometimes I would just stand right. there polishing the dishes. But I did that for about a year and a half. But it, it, I mean, I really wasn't. Did it, did it pay well? I mean, was it, that was when you great? have when you when you have dialogue, it pays well. Like if okay. you have four or five lines, it pays great. If you don't have any lines, it's like a hundred bucks. So it was it was tough, and it, yeah, I it was, was struggling. Right. I was struggling. And and then how often? What do they do? They tape once a week, or uh, no? They tape uh, four every days, day? four days a week. Yeah, you okay, would go. Okay. Yeah, you'd have to get there like at five o'clock in the morning, and the first shoot would be like around seven. You know, everyone would have their hair and makeup stuff, and then. Yeah, right. uh, depending upon if you're in an afternoon shoot or a morning shoot. But it was um, a couple times, you know, four times a week, I think they shot, but they call me four or five times a month. Mm -hmm. And it, listen, I, I I actually fell in love with acting too. I really love it. I, had, uh, I did it, it a It builds movie. confidence, doesn't it? Builds oh my confidence. God. It, and, but you get to be, you know, this different character and, and mm -hmm. all these different roles. And uh, I must say, you know, I, like I said, I do consider myself a baseball player, but uh, still, but I, I think, you know, I have a, I have a real attachment to the world of acting. I could easily have, have been drawn into that if I had some earlier, a little bit more early success. Mm. I, I think I could have went that route for sure. All right. So now you 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 are or were or have been a disc jockey. So how did you circle around to the radio media thing? How how did that come about? Okay. So um, again, I'm in New York now. I'm. I'm sleeping on my cousin's couch, who's a <laughs> tremendous actress in her own right. So I'm sleeping on her couch three nights a week. I'm driving home to work part-time in radio three nights a week. Mm -hmm. And I'm just struggling. I'm knocking on doors. I'm getting right. the no. You know, you walk. What's funny is what people don't understand. Acting has this, you know, when you go on these casting calls, yeah. you walk into a room and you look around and there's 40 people that look just like you. Right, it's, it's kind of like, they yeah, like, they sound like whatever. Yeah. Well, no, okay, depending yeah. on whatever role you're going for, they're all going for the same thing. So you know, yeah. you're trying to figure out how can I catch somebody's eye. But right. anyway, so I I was doing that, and, and like I said, it was it, it was it was gave you some humility too, you know, because you mm -hmm. get turned away a lot more than they say yes. But uh, I got a phone call from a, a friend of mine who's been in, in, in local radio for the longest time, and he says, "Listen." I got a job for you if you want it, but it's full time. You got to take it full time. It's on the radio, which, mm -hmm. you know, I, at, that, at that point in time, I'd never gotten a radio gig uh, full time uh, because for a bunch of different for reasons. But uh, he says, listen, I, I want you to do the afternoons on a brand new radio station in the Mohegan Sun Casino. Oh, okay. And your job would be you introduce or you interview acts and you do all that and, you know, how. Yeah. And so it was appealing to me getting us. I've never, I was, I was 30. One 32 years old and never really got a full time paycheck. I was always, you know, helter skelter yeah. and scattered. So I, I said yes mm -hmm. with the stipulation that if a big role came up, they let me go and, and try out for right, it. Right. So that afternoon show uh, almost immediately turned into a morning show because the morning show guy quit uh, like a week into the, his, uh, his career there. So I ended up taking the morning show at this rock radio station, which still exists in the Mohegan Sun. Okay. So I did that for four or five years, but it was it was a little boring because uh, you know we had fun, but you know I'm listening to the music most of the time. And, yeah, yeah, it becomes habitual, and you know it too. Yeah, long. yeah. No challenge. So then, uh, yes, yeah. So an opening opened up in the same company for they were trying a brand new talk radio station, mm -hmm. and I jumped at that, and here I am, all these years later. I switched I switched companies. I I you know I was with this other company for a few years, and then I went to Full Power Radio. Uh, because the signal was stronger and the whole idea was better. But uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of how I got from there to, to yeah. there. <clears throat> well, tell us about, I know you have great affinity with animals. Um, <laughs> you, you were talking for quite a while there. I think it was a wolf that was outside your window at your home. It was a coyote. A coyote, okay. Coyote, yeah. is that is that 
still happening? Is that coyote uh, around? I haven't seen the, it's funny, I'm looking right out there to see if he's out there now. Yeah. So, you know, it's weird. When, when I lost my last dog, Bailey, it was 11 years ago, almost immediately stumbling into my backyard came this injured deer, right? Yeah. So I, I, she was, she had a broken leg and I, it was heartbreaking. Yes. So I started feeding her, right? And so I, well, I've always had an affinity for animals. I've always loved dogs, cats, whatever, but right. What's weird about the coyote situation is as soon as my last dog died, Ozzy, which was three months ago, like the next day, this injured animal pops up in my backyard. I'm yeah, like, oh, isn't it funny, the fate of life? Yeah, so I, you know, I know I'm not supposed to say this or do it, but I started feeding the coyote okay. and he kept coming back, but I haven't seen him in a, probably three, four weeks. My guess is, you know, it probably didn't work out. It's hard for them to survive if they're injured like that. So. Yeah, we've had we've had some bitter cold, and if they don't find enough to eat, they don't. Well, well, you and I share that same thing. I uh, I love creatures. I, w- I would rather spend the day with the, my dog than, than anybody. I think <laughs> <laughs> we're all I hate to say that, but that's just the way I am. Yeah. yeah. Well, let let's uh, let let's talk about. You have a very beautiful wife, uh, Christine. Is that correct? Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yes. very lovely lady. Um, how did you meet her? How long have you been married? Uh, we've been married for 17 years. Uh, oh, the, great. The season Congratulations. Season I know. Uh, we actually got married late. So if you look at how old I am, we actually didn't get married till uh, I was you know, 38, almost 39 years old. So um, we, we actually knew each other from the time we were 14, mm-hmm. where she was following her, her and her sister, believe it or not, were following around this. Babe Ruth, which is a 14 to 15 year old baseball all-star team that I was on, not to follow me, but just just because they're, you know, one of those things. Anyway, I've known her for that long. And, uh, you know, later on in life, I saw her out one night and we started talking and the next thing you know, we've been married now for 17 years. So I, and it's funny, I always had a crush on her. I was always, I was always afraid of girls growing up. You know, I, I, (laughs) why why is that? Is it the too beautiful a girl, the ice maiden? What, what, what was it? I think maybe I, mean, I gosh, have, you are a good, great baseball player. I mean, you know. oh, that's nice. I don't know. Maybe it's just the rejection, the fear of being rejected oh. at that time. And I was, I mean, when I got into my mid twenties, late twenties, that sort of kind of went away. Mm-hmm. But when I was young, I mean, you know, if a pretty girl looked at me, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, just like, what? So now having had this 17 years of experience, uh, people always talk about what makes a good marriage. What's your opinion on that? Is, is it being friends first? Is it uh, common interests? Is it actually ha- being opposite to many things? What do you think contributes to a good marriage? Yeah, it's such a great question. I, the truth is me and my wife are opposites in almost every way. Um, you know, she is really not a sports fan. She's mm-hmm. not political at all. Uh, she, you know, she works in healthcare. I, I think it's just, you know, you find time for, 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 you know, to, to be with each other and mm-hmm. do things that you both like. But at the same time, I'm, I'm very much of a person who's comfortable being by myself. So I don't need someone yeah. in my shadow all the time. And she's actually the same way. So that's actually a good thing. So we don't have well, I agree. Know, that, that neediness. Yep. Uh-oh, yeah, yeah. Up. Neediness is the right word. There are a lot of people that really require that, and that becomes very tiring. And right, right. You know, and, and yeah, I mean, but you know, whenever we're doing something together, we have a good time. But we we also have a great time when we're you know probably doing things on our own. It's like she does her own interests, and and I do mine, and that's and I think it's a good yeah, thing. And, you not, know, when we have we don't have and like because we don't have any kids because we got married, like I said, a little bit on the late side. So right. you know, whenever we have an, an animal in our lives, that becomes our kid. So it really. <laughs> It's weird how our world completely changes and, and, and sort sure. of goes in around that. So sure. Well, uh, you know, it's interesting to get that aspect. Now you said she's in healthcare. Yes. Uh, what what kind of uh, what is her she's major? a physical therapist. Physical a therapist. physical therapist, okay. Yeah. And and there's a lot of need for that, not only not only for the elderly, but uh, uh, yeah. for you know, gee, people in general. P- people are suffering so much from the stress of this COVID thing yeah. and, and life in general. Um, you know, that, that, that kind of support, which is natural, not taking medicine is really the best kind. It, it really know, is. It's a, it's a healthier, it's a healthier way to go. Um, you know, have you, you know, you're always interviewing politicians. Have you ever thought of running for something yourself? Yes. I did. Okay. I, it, it's funny. Um, I don't want to let any too, too many trade secrets out. So I really, really, really 
was considering throwing uh, the hat into the ring uh, against Blumenthal this time. Now, ah. yeah, I mean, I, I've been asked by some folks and, you know, I've had the preliminary meetings, but I, I really think, see, I, it's funny, I'll, I'll share the secret on the air with you yeah. since you're so nice to have me on. <laughs> sure. Um, I feel like there's one more great run in me at something. Yeah, right. So I feel like I, you know, I did the baseball thing, I did the acting thing, I've done the radio thing. I don't want to give up the radio thing, but mm -hmm. I feel like the, I have something more to offer, folks. Sure. So I, I did think about that, and yeah. what happened was, unfortunately, and I keep going back to my, uh, you know, sort of a personal sadness, is that, you know, my dog died like three and a half, three and a half, four months ago, and I had to make a decision, like really, right around that time, and I just wasn't. Mm -hmm. in, mentally into it and plus yeah. i've never done it before like i don't i don't even know where to begin it's somebody who talks to politicians every day i wouldn't know where to begin how to do that yeah. and this is the, it's a huge yeah. undertaking and i understand that yeah, but yeah well always, with yeah, that i i think you know sometimes it's just you 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 get into it and if you're a fast tracker and you hit the ground running you can find that you, the people who have been in that particular arena for a long time, you find out that you're a lot smarter than they are, <laughs> and you actually end up being better at what they're doing than they are. You know, they, they just have a practice trade. And, and so let me just say to this, for your viewers, uh, if they want to sign up, uh, listen to you on a regular basis, they get the app, right? They, they can yeah. listen to you daily, uh, Monday yeah. through Friday, 6, uh, 6 to 10 a.m., yeah. And um, uh, any kind of information you'd like to give to be able to get hold of you or or your website or your email address. Well, I would love it if some of the people from that side of the state could listen in because uh, you get a chance to hear uh, all kinds of different folks, politicians, and we do that every day. We also try to have some fun, but uh, you can go to my website, which is leelc.com, uh, and that's sort of in the works, but we've been toy toying with that for a while. And uh, on my Facebook page, you can like that and, and we can have some fun there as well. Well, it's been great spending time with you, Lee, and I will uh, definitely be listening to you every day. Um, but I want to remind everyone, our viewers, that you can see all of our programs on ctvalleyviews.com. This is Susan Patricelli Regan. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, please be sure to see all of our shows. And I am so grateful to have Lee on today as my guest. Thank you very much. Thanks.